Uh, this has been inspired by um, recent calls that I've had. So I, I did the Superconscious Creator call uh, earlier this week. And also last week, I ran day three of uh, the Magnetic Mind uh, three days. And there was something that I that came that came from that that I wanted to talk about today, and that was uh, how to create with precision, you know, how to create with precision, how to how to get what it is that you want to get, how to create. And for some of our even uh, most experienced magnetic mind tribe, this still becomes a little bit elusive. And, and that's simply because our unconscious wants to avoid writing uh, true, clear choices down. And uh, it's, it, is, it is really interesting, all the different ways that we're taught to, to focus and create and goal setting and dream setting and vision boards and everything else like that. And, and what happens is when you really write down and create a clear choice about something that's just on your heart, it's just, just on your heart, something that you'd love to see manifest, something you'd just love to have. Your unconscious sets in to tell you about how you can't have that, about how you can't have that, how that's not allowed for you. And there's a story that gets told. And we were discussing this in depth uh, on the creator course. And so we'll do a little, a little talk about it here. We're, we're, we're always in this battle between what our heart would love to see manifest and what our unconscious believes we need to do or be or fix or solve in order to have it. Does that make sense? We're always in this battle between just what we would like and then what we think we need to do or be or have. Or, and, and, and we're either in one or one, or one of those focuses. So you're either in the, the focus of uh, what it is that you're creating. So your desired result or your end result. You're either in that focus, current reality being here, or you're in this other focus, which we'll call your, your uh, self-conscious agenda. Now, you're either in one of these, but you can't be in both. So this is something that was very, that's very important, uh, very important uh, for me to learn. So I was told many, 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 many different uh, things about creating. First, I was told, you know, you must have smart goals. That you know, uh, you must have specific, measurable. Uh, what, is, what was the A for? Action oriented. I don't even know what the A is for. Uh, R and then T was you know uh, time time oriented. So I was told you must have smart goals. You know, I was also fo uh, told, okay, don't don't worry about focusing on what you want to create. Focus on what it is you need to do. You know, and so that's right. Sally says it's achievable, achievable. And it's like, well, what's really achievable, you know? So it was, it was always quite limiting, wasn't it? And then the time aspect of it. Then I was told, you know, don't, don't really focus on where you're going to get, just focus on what you need to do, right? If you just meditate, if you just do good, if you add value to people's lives, you'll just get paid. If you just work hard, if you just put your best foot forward, has anyone just been told, don't worry about where you're going to get to, just focus on what you should do. Eat this food, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. The focus on what you must do. OK, and then uh, others, you know, I got told, just focus on the feeling. It will manifest. Positive people get positive results. Just get into the feeling. As long as you feel it, that feeling is the key. The feeling is the prayer. Just get in the feeling and the world's going to bend to your will. And, and, and you, you get taught and told as if you've been around enough uh, work and you've been focused on achieving, you know, you get told so many things. and and it can become quite confusing. I know it did for me. And, and really, the, the truth that really set me free was when I stopped focusing on how I needed to be or what I needed to do and, and, and what others told me and what others would think. And when I stopped all of that and I just said, what would I love to create and took direct action to see that manifest in the world, it manifest. And so, so I just redid my choices list. And one of my choices is I choose the end result of owning a uh, island paradise retreat where I can have conscious education clients come to and do retreat work with me. And, you know, they can fly to me. I, that, that's a choice. And, and, and I choose that. And as soon as I choose that, 
I code up a reality where I don't have enough money, I don't have enough resources, I don't have a da 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 because it's going to cost, I mean, the ones that I've seen that I really love are like 20, 25 million, like it's not, and that's the lower end, like it's, it's, it's significant. But then, and it's true, it's on my heart. I want to see that manifest. I think that's going to be a beautiful, I can't wait to be there, waking up, go for a swim, you know, do live trainings with people, have a great video studio, go back, like just, I choose that, I bloody choose that. And, and yet then this other part shows up and tells me I can't have it. Does that make sense? It says, here's why you can't have it. And the, the old me would then go create a plan. Okay, Chris, you need to save this. You need to do this. You need to da, 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 da. And, and, or, and you need to reduce. And, and why can't you have it? And if you had it, you know, how good would that make you? How, like all this other crap rather than I just want that. And, and I want to relate that to something that you've got on your list that you're choosing. And then you're telling yourself it's too big or that you can't have it or that what, are you, what have you got? Hey, or how you need to be or what you need to do. See, that's what I choose and I choose it. And I don't actually care how it shows up. Truthfully, it doesn't matter how it shows up, but that's what I choose. I choose that. And it can show up by me earning the money and you know, you know, building it that way, or it could show up anyway. But there's an obvious action to that being created. And the obvious action would be, you know, start talking to banks and finances and find the right one and these things. But what do I find my unconscious pattern wanting to do? Is what Chris you need to recode. You need to do, do, do. You need to do this. You need to become this. You need to get a plan. How much would you need to save? Well, if you're going to spend 25 million, you need 20% deposit. That's 5 million. So you need to have this many more students in your programs. And then you're going to have to put this on stamp and da, 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 all these other things. And so do you see that? So even Lisa said, well, what if you don't have good credit? And what if you don't have this? And what, da, 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 what if you don't have, what if you don't have? You see how we have this? And I'm, I'm going to call it the rattle. We have this rattle. It like shakes. And, and, and all of it is in this uh, self-conscious agenda, trying to figure out why, what I need to do to be able to have that rather than just going for it. Can I get a yes for everyone that's experienced this themselves? It's not just me, is it? It's not just me. And, and so the truth is, is we get told all these things. So, you know, a smart a person telling you smart goals, we all, it's specific, it's measurable. Is it, is it really achievable? Have you ever made that much money? It's like, well, it wouldn't be achievable, whatever the R is. And then is it time bound? Chris, you need to put a time on it. Time just puts you in so much stress. Another person would say, well, just get, get in the, get in the feeling of it. You know, it's going to show up. Just get in the bloody, and we, we know that we've all tried that. And, you know, sometimes you fluke it. Right. And, and so, and then the other part of me, what's really going on is I'm just focusing on how I can't have it. So today is about creating with precision. The first thing about creating with position, uh, precision is, is just getting into that ask of what would I actually like? And it is the most simple and most difficult question to answer. If, if you are a powerful creator, what would I like to have? How would I like it to be? How would I choose it to be? What would I love to see created? And it's interesting because as soon as you start answering that question, you start bloody editing it or you avoid it and write everything. You don't have one. There you go, Karen. Love you. You see that? As soon as you ask the question, what would I really, really like? So this is the first thing is what would I really love? What would I really like? What would I like? What would I like it to be? I'm at day one right now of whatever the new, the new choice is. I'm on day one. <laughs> I took it back. I'm on day one. I'm a blank canvas today. I want you all to experience yourself. You can be a blank canvas today. If you were starting life over from scratch today, you know, you've still got the same friends, but it's scratch, zero. You started as you'd like it. How would you do it? What would you create? How would your morning be? Who would you hang out with? What businesses might you start? What art would you create? What books would you write? What charities would you do? How would you, what, what holidays would you have? What, what car would you drive? How would it be? How would it be? And, and it's such an important question that I, I think it's, it's up there with, you know, what would the person I become, uh, what would the person do who already has that do? You know, it, it's, it's such a thorough question. So what I want to, you know, to, to bring that bring that forward to you now and say, if today was day one, you know, it's kind of an Amazon quote, Jeff Bezos says, you know, always day one. What would you do? How would you be? So that's step one is to really get into that. Step two, separate 
what you want from what you think is possible. Separate what you really want from what you think is possible. Because if it's on your heart that you create that, if it's there, if it's for you, if that's there, then it's there. Your idea of what is possible or not possible is complete rubbish. It's just shit that you've made up. It's just your stuff. It's your, it's your muck. It's your, it's your self-conscious agenda that is designed to keep you safe. Okay. So that, that's step two. So step one, what do, I re- what do I want? What do I actually want? You know, out of everything. So I'm sitting at the, 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 the universal uh, menu. I can have anything I choose. I can't have everything I choose, but I can, have, I can have anything. I can't have everything. Because if you ha- try to have everything, you have nothing. And so you can have anything, kind of everything, you can have anything. And so you're all, out of all of that, what would I choose to create? The, the fact of whether you can have it or not is completely irrelevant. It's just stories, whether they're ancestral stories, familial stories, personal stories, they're just stories, they're just made up. So that's step two. Step three is you must conceive of the whole result, the main event, and all of its ramifications. So, for example, if you choose to be a business leader, the ramification of being a business leader is a huge amount of responsibility. So when you create end results, before you put it on your choice list, you must think of everything that's involved in that. So I, I purchased a 26-acre a, a place up in the, the wilderness, uh, up in uh, Natural Park in Springbrook um, on the border here. And I, and I bought this amazing place. We bought it, sorry. We bought it. My wife and I bought it. And, and we bought it. And the ramifications, what comes with owning such a big land is, that, you know, you've got to look after the land. And, you know, there's kangaroos that, you know, shit everywhere. <laughs> you know, like there's all sorts of stuff. Okay, and so you've got to conceive of everything. Let's say that you, you know, you want to start a business. Well, you're going to have to sell. True, you're going to have to, you're going to have to sell. You want to have a business. You're going to have to, you're going to have to get finance or if you, or spend money on marketing. That's part of it. Does that make sense? Is is you must conceive. <laughs> Everyone's focusing on the kangaroos. We have, we have like forty to fifty kangaroos. Or actually, uh, mountain wallabies. Just, just we just look at them when we're up there. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's for sure, for sure, true. And they crap everywhere, but it's just um, it's just uh, it's just grass. <laughs> anyway, uh, Australians know what I mean. You know, the small small mountain wallabies, and um, and snakes. We have snakes up there. We had this uh, meter and a half snake skin just on our front door the other day. Anyway, so so ramifications. Okay is is ramifications what this means is that you conceive of it all so when you're making your choice and you really are thinking about what you want to choose you must you must really go into it and notice that there are going to be other things that come with it and so when you choose it you must realize you're choosing all of it see some of us choose to be an influential leader but we don't want anyone to disagree with us. Think about that. We're choosing to be an influencer. We're choosing to have a message, but we, but we, we don't allow anyone to disagree with us. We see that. But the ramifications of choosing to be a leader is that there's going to be people to sing or disagree with us. We, you know, we, we, so you must conceive of all. All that will be there. So let's say, so, so if I'm choosing this, this island resort. Well, I already know that there's probably going to be $20,000 a month worth of uh, insurances and da, 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 all these other things. There's also going to be the fact that I'll need to make sure that people turn up to it and, you know, that, that it works. There's, so there's lots there. And then there's probably going to be, um, you know, maintenance and building expenses and staffing. And so, you know, it's probably like $100,000 a month that I, I must be making just to cover the working operations of it. And that's, that's something I must consider as I'm choosing it. Does this make sense? So, so step one, when we're really getting into this, is ask, what do I want? How do I want it? What would I like? 
and you get into that field. Step two, separate what you'd like from what you think is possible. Three, conceive of the whole thing. Really understand the main event, all its ramifications entirely. Everything that's involved, uh, you know, in, in that choice and what it's going to mean, what it's going to mean. Because if you're not happy to receive it all, if you're not, if you want to be a, um, you know, an inter internationally recognized thought leader and you're not willing to accept people on the internet saying you're an idiot, you'll never have it. You see, because you can't just choose the, 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 the bits you want out of it. Make sense? And that's important. And that's important to choose the whole thing. You, you say, oh, I want to be a best-selling author. Well, you know, in order to choose to be a best-selling author, you have to bloody write a good book. And that can take a really long time. Okay, so very important. Step four, you must, once you've conceived of it all and you really have it, and maybe you go, hey, I don't, I don't know everything that it will be. That's okay. You can, uh, you can be there. You can ask your superconscious. You can imagine how it's going to be and really envision it. Part of what we do when we make up how great these new results are going to be, who does this, is we, we only look at the bits we like. Isn't it? We don't realize, you know, we're choosing to have a family. Well, that means there's going to be ramifications of that, you see there's going to be time constraints and other things isn't it true but by actually looking at it this way the whole thing then we've got step four once you've conceived of the whole thing you must ask yourself and what you must ask yourself is if i could have it all of it if i could have it all of it all of it, the good, the bad, the, the, the wealth, the responsibility, the freedom, the, whatever it is, would I take it? If I could have it, would I take it? Will I do the actions required to make it happen? Mel uh, is typing and she's got access to my notes. Uh, so you can, see, you can see it broken down then. So you must ask yourself, if I could have it, all of it, would I take it? And that's where the superconscious comes in. Because if there's any aspect of that that you're resisting, you won't go for it. You won't go for it, will you? If, if, you, if your end result, let's say you say your end result, we've got a lot of people becoming coaches here, their end result become a coach, okay? But if you're not willing to have family and friends think you're a little bit ridiculous, and the super conscious what? And who do you think you are to be a coach? If you're not willing to uh, that to be a part of that, that there'll be some people that judge it, then you're not willing to have it. You see? And sometimes we, we choose this, but our agenda is actually to be liked or loved. Or uh, we, we say, hey, Chris, I'm choosing to be a coach. But what we're actually choosing is, is we're, we're choosing to, uh, to have status. Anyway. Uh, Everyone's seeing the little list there uh, that that uh, Mel's is putting in. So when you're choosing it, all the ramifications. So I want to ask you: with some of your choices, what are some of the uh, the other things that come with things you've already created? So let's think about like a house. So maybe you're renting a home right now, and you say, "Chris, I choose to own a house." Fantastic. Well, guess what? When you choose to own a house. You also got to do what? Those of you who have, that's right, Lillian. Lillian says, in other words, don't just romanticize the end result. Be in reality. So what comes with a house, everyone, that doesn't come with rent? Yeah, we had a storm. If you have a storm, you're the one that's got to fix it. If your garage door stops working, it's you. Yeah, in Australia, there's, uh, there's land tax. There's rates that you have to pay. And then there's insurance. Sometimes the land tax rates and insurance is about as much as rent. <laughs> True. And, and so, and yeah, so neighbors staying in one place for a long time. So paperwork, uh, all sorts of things, right? So 
Those are the ramifications of having it. And, and uh, I like, I forgot, I forgot who mentioned it now, but someone, um, sorry, sorry, I've got lots of things coming in my mind. Um, but, but someone said, don't just romanticize the goal. It's, it's be in the true choice because romanticizing the goal is, is actually a form of, of trying to trick yourself of what it's going to be like. And you never get it. Isn't it true? If you romanticize, if you only, if you, if you live in a, in a false reality, you, 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 you know there's going to be other things, but when, if you don't really ask and, and get yourself ready for it all, then you don't have it, do you? You don't have it. I think a lot of people want to be a business leader, but they don't want to have responsibility of paying for all the staff and everybody that's there. You know, I was telling one of my team the other day, I said, uh, and, and this team member was saying, oh, yes, I've, I finally, I'm going to, I've paid off all my debt. I'm walking into this month without any debt. And I was like, oh, that's awesome. Every month I walk into about half a million dollars worth of uh, bills. It's time to get bigger responsibility. You see, because it's, 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 uh, it's, it comes with it. It comes with it. Okay, uh, so, so here's the steps. And the last step is to formally make the choice. Okay, so here, uh, Mel's will type in the five steps written out from my notes here for you. Oh, she already did. Too, too quick. Uh, of how to really get precise with your choice. So ask first, what do I want? Separate what you want from what you think is possible. Conceive of the whole the whole result, the main event, all the ramifications. Ask if I could have that and all the ramifications, would I take it? Will I do the actions required to make that happen and have it? And then you can formally make the choice. And so we're going to talk about formally uh, making the choice today and how to how to be. Yes, let's give a big shout out and thanks to Mel's. Mel's is uh, the community manager for the Magnet Mind Masterclass. So she is always here for you. We love you, Mel's. And she's got access to my to my notes, which are all over the place, <laughs> uh, which is which is really great. Okay, so choice making, choice making is a look at all that love, Mouse. You you you're amazing, and to all of our CEC team. Actually, let's just give a bit of love to the accounts girls. Uh, you guys absolutely rock. To the uh, the operations team, uh, all these amazing humans behind the scenes, the support team, the digital marketing team. You guys absolutely rock, uh, Matt and JV and Esther and Brett and everyone doing everything to make sure this, this amazing thing happens. Sometimes very, uh, very humbling to be able to be one of the, the lead, uh, lead singers with this amazing band. And uh, it's incredible, very incredible. So how do you make sure you're, you've got a good choice? How do you make sure you've got uh, a good choice? Okay, so first, Really simple. You pick something you just want. Okay. Now we already have talked about in the live event. Um, you know how we are not picking something that we want. We have many other. Uh, we have six six ways to do that. It's also in my book. So I'm not going to re recover that ground. We only talked about it last week. Okay. So step one: pick something you just want. Something you just choose. Now the the second thing here, and this is a very important thing, is your choices should not involve another specific person. Your choice may involve other people, but, but it may not involve a specific person. There's two very important reasons why. First, it's completely unethical to try to mentally impose your will on others. and. All that you're really saying to that person is you're not powerful enough to make your own choices. Okay. Now, parents, I'm talking about when we're working with adults, and you all know when your kid is ready to be making their own their own choices, right? So we know that's a different domain. But when it comes to, to making choices, your choices must not involve other people. So relationship. You must not choose to have a specific relationship with this person. You must choose to have a great, happy, synergistic, loving, passionate relationship. You see? Because if it's about a singular person, then you are, you are making that singular person have the power whether or not your choice can happen. Okay? So, it, so your choices, um, you can choose to be a great mother. 
you cannot choose for your son to stop a certain behavior. Does that make sense? But you can choose to be the best mother possible. You see that? Because that's a powerful choice. An impowerful choice is, is each day saying, I choose for him or her to be a certain way. It's their choice. True? Is it true, everyone? You guys know that's true. And we all know, we know we're not talking about, you know, three or four year old kids here. We're talking about, you know, um, we all know what we're talking about. Okay. You are not able to impose your will on others. Everyone has their own will. And there's, it's actually a science instruction that, that others are not powerful and they will sense it. And they will tend to resent your intrusion on their life choices. Does that make sense? They, they will feel it. This person wants me to do it their way. They don't think I'm good enough or able enough or capable enough to make my own. You see? So, so it's a very important one. Okay. The second choice, the second, uh, sorry, the, the, third, the third point here uh, is that the, the choice should be something uh, tangible uh, and fairly specific, okay? If your choice is too vague, if your choice is too vague or too general or not clearly defined, your consciousness has a difficult time understanding what you want. Does that make sense? So what's an example of something that's too vague? Well, I was working with a, a, a client recently and, and she had the example of, of having a, uh, a, a, a piece of land that was there to provide soul healing. And this is paraphrase, this isn't the right words, soul healing and um, connection for all animals and all people. Beautiful choice. But the, the problem was, was how do we know when that's actually done? You see that? How do we know when that's been manifest? Remember this, everyone, is that the creative structure is when we're bringing something into reality. Okay? That's the creative structure. So uh, the problem-solving structure is when we're solving something. There's, there's, there's actually a choice in the middle, which is where there's no way to know whether the thing exists or not. You see? It kind of always exists. And so what we made the choice to, to shift to was I choose to run a retreat with humans, but I choose to run a retreat that connects them to their, their soul mission and creates healing. Now, then this lady's response, and she might be on here, so we know who, she knows who I'm talking about, but it's very vague, is that the response was, but that's not everything I want. I said, exactly. But when you create that retreat and it's done, you can tick it off, you can celebrate, you can do a dance, and then you can say, and now what am I going to create in alignment with this end result of this land being here? You see that? So the land being there to create soul connection and healing, that's the true end result. But in order for us to manifest, we need desired realities to create on the way. Can I get a yes in the chat box from everyone who's starting to get that? Is that an end result is where is the feeling, the end result, but a choice, it needs to be able to be manifest, okay? You need to be able to tick it off. You need to be able to tick it off. Then it's done. You cross it off. You go, yes. And then it gets replaced with something else. And your choices list becomes this thing that you just keep on getting to add things to. And so what I always say is, is maybe have like five or six choices, create those, see them be manifest, then create the next one. And it becomes a game. Choice making becomes a game. You can have anything you want, but you can't have everything. So you need to choose what you're going to focus your energy on, create it, see it, then create the next thing. It's a game. It's all it is. We're here to play this game. Okay. The goal may be material or non-material. It doesn't matter as long as you can recognize the goal when you've achieved it. So maybe you have a goal is to feel joy in your life. And go, okay, well, let's say that you've achieved feeling joy in your life. 
how would you know? I go, well, I wouldn't know. You go, well, great. Well, we need to know when we've achieved it. We need to know when we've completed this. So I say, well, probably I'll look at my, uh, my daily journal and for three days in a row, I've said, I'm so full of joy. Or it's, uh, it'll be a Saturday morning and I'll be going for a run and I'll just be in joy and I'll be reflecting on it going, yes, it's created. Do you see that? So, so really understanding the choice and lenses process, hey, and, and obviously this is this is in the beginner section. So anyone who's brand new, um, you do need to go back through the introductory training of lenses and know that an end result is the feeling, and and that gives us a feeling of what we're creating, and then a choice is something that we're choosing to manifest. Yeah, end result is the big end result, big picture. Desired reality is the next choice that we want to see manifest. Yeah. So end result might be, for example, with me, my end result is I choose the end result uh, of I've created the leading content education company on the planet. The, the current uh, creation that I'm working on is, uh, is 100 people into my business coaching program. Make sense? So, so that's, the, that's what I know I can manifest. Yeah. Okay, so, so I just said number four, the goal can be material or non-material. It doesn't matter as long as you can recognize the goal. Okay. Next is is the is the choice okay is the choice needs to be formed in the present tense okay the the choice it it needs to be it, it needs to be um, chosen in the present uh, tense and, and that's that means that you you state it as as though it is complete or done it is it is done. Does that make sense? Cool. So that the choice is in the present tense. Okay. So you must not, you must not have your choice written as something that you're getting to. Okay. It's a, this is, I've chosen it and this is it done. Cool. Which is fantastic. Uh, the next one is that the choice is a result that you really want, not a process towards a choice. Does that make sense? So a, a process would say, what's an example of a process towards a choice? A process towards a choice might be, I choose to feel confident. I choose to go to the gym. You see, these are processes to get you somewhere. Okay. The processes to get you somewhere. Does that make sense? Another example is, is, is when someone says, I choose to rid myself of a negative belief. That's not actually what they want. It's not what they really are going for, you see. And, and by focusing on a, a process, all, all that happens is that you don't allow any other, uh, any other way to exist that gets that choice done. Does that make sense? So we must make sure that the choice is an end result. Okay, last one. Last one. It's not what the choice is. It's what the choice is does. The choice focuses you on a time-space reality that you are going to breathe into existence through focusing on it and taking action. And what this does to you is it pulls you out of the problem reality and focuses you in the creative reality. And the silent instruction you give to yourself when you're in the creative reality is, I'm powerful enough to have this. Does that make sense? When you're there, you, you're, if you have big, bold choices that you love, what's the un and if you're taking action towards those, the silent instruction is what? Is that you're someone that can have those.